Hi everyone, can you hear me? Yes. My name is Simone, I'm a technical lead at Freyze. And this evening I'd like to talk about uh, how we use uh, Ghostwagger at Freyze. Um, so, um, is uh, anything wrong with it? Yeah. So, um, I'd like to give an introduction about uh, Freyze, um, about, um, uh, about Swagger and Ghostwagger, the actual tool. Uh, how we use it at Freezy, uh, the advantages and the disadvantages that we found in using it, and, um, and then uh, give a, an actual example of uh, how we use it at Freezy. So um, uh, Freezy is uh, a, um, an AI company. Uh, we are a Mark tech company, and we built a, an artificial intelligence pipeline that writes, um, create, uh, actually generates the text for uh, subject lines uh, for marketing purposes. Uh, about a year ago, we started a project to uh, integrate our platform with ESP, uh, email service providers. And um, the, this, um, the, this service is a microservice uh, with a, a REST-based API. So we knew the goal was a great fit. And we also wanted to use Swagger right away. Um, so we were fairly happy with our stack, but then we came across this tool called uh, Ghostwagger, and uh, we were even happier. And uh, the reason is that, um, uh, well, before I carry on, anybody here uh, familiar with Swagger at all? Quite a few of you. So for those of you who are not familiar with it, Swagger is a standard for uh, specifying REST APIs. Uh, now uh, Swagger is in its uh, third iteration and is actually called Open API. I'll probably use the two terms interchangeably in this talk. And, um, and then uh, here there is also the Go Swagger, the uh, link for the Go Swagger tool, uh, which is a great tool um, because it allows to do a few things. So this is pretty much how we use it at Phrase um, uh, first, we start by uh, either creating a new specification or editing uh, an old one. Then we use the command line tool uh, to validate our specification. Then we use the, the, the tool for what it really shines for, which is generation, code generation. And then we compile the code and uh, carry on. Um, so um, the, um, uh, the um, the tool, uh, as I said, uh, can do a few things. Uh, one is uh, code validation, and the other one is uh, generation. So uh, let's assume you have uh, a specification, and uh, you need to change uh, the specification. You need to add, say, uh, an endpoint. So you would edit your file, and then you would use the tool to um, validate the specification. Make sure that uh, what you've written actually makes sense and validates against the uh, OpenAPI specification. Uh, here, of all the advantages that this tool gives, perhaps the uh, validation part is uh, n not the best, uh, not the best. And here is a, a real life example. So here you can see, uh, yes, you can see the pointer. Uh, so this is a real life example. There was a, an error in the specification and there are, the tool prints a few lines regarding this uh, one-off clause, which is a, um, an open API um, specification clause. That specific clause was never used in the entire uh, specification. And, and so this, this error message is a bit misleading. And this happens, it can happen quite a, uh, a lot. As you can see, there are no um, uh, line numbers, so you don't even know where the error is. Uh, and you know, with a bit of um, uh, practice, you figure out that there probably is something wrong with the parameters uh, part of the post method of the uh, XML API uh, endpoint. But this is something that you have to figure out yourself. The tool, per se, will not help you out very much in validation. So my uh, suggestion is that uh, you should, uh, if you ever use this tool, um, validate often. Um, make small changes to your specification and use a tool to validate often. Anyway, let's assume you manage to validate and everything passes, then you can actually use the tool for what it really shines, which is code generation. Um, uh, the tool is capable of generating Go code for server and client. Uh, the two commands are very similar, and this is the simplest uh, form in which you can run the command. This will generate code. Uh, that will compile down to an actual server. Uh, the tool will uh, generate a web server, um, 
a Go web server uh, that can serve either HTTP or HTTPS. Uh, we'll generate all the models of your uh, specification. Uh, we'll stub all the handler functions. And uh, the, the last two are perhaps the most interesting. It will also generate a lot of data types and validation functions for all your endpoints. And uh, I, I am particularly keen on the last two because this enforces very good practice from the get-go. So uh, you, you uh, start, um, you put the right, uh, your best foot forward because the, uh, the tool will generate code that will enforce good practices. Um, as I mentioned, you can also generate a client, uh, and uh, in this case, uh, very similar command. Uh, the tool will also generate all the models and, and data types and validation function. What it won't generate is something that will compile down to uh, an executable. This uh, makes sense because you probably want to import all these, uh, all these packages and all this code into something else. Uh, it certainly works really well for us. Uh, so here I'm showing you uh, the, a very simple uh, example of what you, um, uh, you, pass to, you can pass to the command to generate code. This is a more, uh, um, a more um, advanced um, uh, example. This is probably what you're going to use in production. So the last two lines here, um, uh, these are uh, parameters that are used to tell the uh, tool how to call the packages that uh, will be generated and where to put them. And they don't, uh, because uh, you may want to uh, have your specification in uh, a repo, but generate for a completely different project. Uh, and uh, the second line here is probably the most interesting. Here we pass in two parameters to the, to the tool, uh, the operation IDs and the tags. And, and these are two, both the operation IDs and the tags are two um, parameters which are part of the open API specification. And uh, they are extremely useful when used well because uh, it allow, they allow a user to um, mix and match and uh, logically, um, um, uh, as you say, uh, and to logically uh, divide a large specification into chunks. Let me give you a real life example. This is, can, can you guys see this? So this is an excerpt for a much larger specification, something very similar to what we use in production. Uh, here I'm defining just two endpoints, or I'm presenting just two endpoints. Uh, and uh, I'm using uh, both the two parameters, the um, operation ID and the tags, and I'm using them to um, add uh, information, add um, uh, uh, logic to the, the two uh, endpoints. So uh, an operation ID uh, is something that defines uh, what action uh, the endpoints does. Um, you, you could share the operation ID for all the endpoints in your uh, specification. My suggestion is that uh, you can use it to bundle together um, endpoints uh, depending on what they do. And the tags uh, is a, um, uh, an optional um, uh, parameter that can be used to add extra uh, information to uh, an endpoint. For instance, here, uh, this is uh, a server um, endpoint. Uh, this is the actual um, tool we're building uh, at Freezy. And uh, we, add, uh, we added a few uh, tags. Uh, it's uh, the main, um, um, is, is, is the main, um, so it will be compiled down to a main. Uh, it's a server, and it's us. Uh, this, uh, uh, and it's, uh, this is a completely different endpoint. This is an endpoint that points to uh, one of our, our third-party um, uh, 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 providers. And we add in tags to uh, define the teaser provider, uh, what the, uh, the endpoint um, will return uh, that is probably going to be compiled as a client and, uh, and other things as well. And the point of using these two, um, th these two parameters and using them uh, in this, um, uh, pa passing them to the generation part is that you can, and this is exactly what we did, we can, you can consolidate all the different specification into one big specification, right? And you could, uh, by mixing and matching those two parameters, you can say, generate the server for everything that has an operation ID um, called add new item or you could generate a client for everything that is part of, uh, that has the provider one tag, 
or uh, uh, the client tag. Or you could do, the, you could, you could do exactly the opposite. You could have a, another microservice within your company that uses, that has to connect to uh, this microservice, and you can generate a client code for what here is uh, specified as a server, or vice versa, you could create, you could generate server code for what is uh, one of the third party um, uh, service that you need to connect to. And you could use this service, this new server, to mock um, a response and, and uh, write your implementation, and, sorry, your integration tests. Uh, so there's a lot more to talk about it, but I think my time is running out. So um, I, um, I'll just um, wrap this up, and uh, I'll say that we, um, we were very happy in, uh, when we found out this tool, Go Swagger. And, um, it has improved our productivity, partly because we don't have to write um, uh, boilerplate code anymore, but also because it uh, enforces good practices from the very beginning, uh, high quality code. And then uh, we managed to, thanks to uh, the two parameters I showed you, we managed to consolidate different files into one specification. And now we have a single source of truth and all developers um, uh, of all the projects involved in these various APIs uh, can have this single source of truth where they can find up-to-date information. And thank you. <laughs>